Good morning. How's everybody? We already went through all that, so just to break the ice. I don't really, I don't have a joke for you this morning. Can you believe that? Huh? I don't have a joke this morning. Huh? I don't believe that. Is this the one? There was a, there was three drunk guys. And they took their boat over to the other side of the river docked it there, went to the bar, about three o'clock in the morning, they come back staggering. You know, they're, they're tanked out of their minds. So they get in the boat and they row all night long. They said, why is it taking us so long to get across the river? Daylight came, the boat was still tied to the dock. <laughs> At <laughs> least you laughed about it anyhow. That's good. That's good. I'm going to ask us to do something that we usually don't do here. I want us to stand for the reading of God's Word in reverence of it. Can we do that? It's found in Revelations chapter 3, <clears throat> starting at the 14th verse. And to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, The words of the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of God's creation. I know your works, and you are neither cold nor hot. Would that you be either cold or hot, so because you are lukewarm and neither hot or cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say I am rich, I have prospered, and I have need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold, refined by fire, so that you may be rich, and the white garments, so that you may clothe yourself, and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen, and salve to anoint your eyes, so that you may see. Those whom I love I reprove, and discipline, so, so be jealous, zealous and repent. This does not read like King James. I'm sorry. <laughs> Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and, and eat with him and he with me. The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne as I conquer and sit down with my father on his throne, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. You may be seated. Amen. How many this morning, right here in our own congregation, is saved? Okay. I guess everybody here is saved. You have a good day. I want to take my time. I've been studying this not just this week, but for a while on this, uh, the seven churches of Asia Minor and wondering where we're at within these seven churches. 
I was wondering while I was praying and studying, what would God say about our church? In his letter. Would he be pleased? Would he be mad at the pastor? No. I heard a no, but you're not God. <laughs> Would he be up with upset with some of the people that are here? It's kind of scary once you sit back and really think, what does God think of our church? Because he steps back and puts us through an MRI machine and really checks out his church. Amen? Amen. In Acts chapter 2, you don't have to turn here if you don't want to. I, I'm not. I already know what it says. But I like this verse in Acts chapter 2 after the Holy Ghost says, uh, I'll come and Peter done his preaching and 3,000 souls were added. But here's the thing. The Bible says, and the Lord added to the church daily. 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 Mm -hmm. Such as should be. Where's my Bible scholars? Huh? And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Huh? I'm glad I am a member of His church and what He's doing in His church. Aren't you? It's good to have membership, but it's better to have a membership there. Amen. Knowing that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I want my name there. When I was growing up, I was taught that every time you did something wrong, God's up there with an eraser and a piece of chalk. Huh? And every time I did something bad, he'd erase my name out of the Lamb's book of life. If somebody got me upset and I might have said a swear word, look, I'm going to hell. That's how I was taught. Try to get that out of your mind. You know, after 40, 50 years maybe. But I found out when I broke off from that and started studying the Bible for myself, they were wrong. Amen. Amen. But that church, the churches of God, has finally come to light on that, and they're teaching it right, surely, after I leave. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm going to talk a little bit by, about Laodicea. It's the last church that God made a stop at. I believe we are living today in Laodicea. Huh? If you're not, if you have not studied this, this is a good study. Very good. But Laodicea was damaged. Or it was wrecked by an earthquake in A.D. 60. But it was self-sufficient. Laodicea, a commercial center and a site of thriving medical and textile industries, declined imperial because of the, that, uh, the disaster. And the council of that town, or the people in roundabout towns like Kalashi, and all those that was in a 10 mile range, asked them, do you want help to build your city again? And get this, we don't need no help. 
we'll build it ourselves. They were that rich in this city. Beautiful city. I, I got to see some pictures of it. I put it up. I wish I could put it up on there. But a gorgeous looking city. Jesus knew where to plant churches. Right in the middle of an industrial plant. Huh? And he got people to come. The pastor had to take on a lot of responsibility in this church. But the Bible says some of his members of this church was cold. Cold. Oh, they might show up on Sunday morning, but you won't see them again till next Sunday morning. You ask for help, Pastor, and the cold ones just don't have time. I don't want to. Well, if I step on your toes, just say ouch. Okay? But Jesus is saying here to the church, I know your works. You maybe can hide them from the pastor, but I know you. I know how you live when you leave the church. And they thought they were living. They had need of nothing. Physically. Wouldn't that be nice to call headquarters, Brother Sam, and tell them we have need of nothing? We're going to pay you off. Cash. Wouldn't that be something? Then we don't have to buy adding on. We can build anywhere we want. Huh? I believe this church was a mega church. If you want to call them churches megas. But I look at these churches today. I study those pastors. All of them. Some preach okay. Other preach false. Other ones, it's like chicken. You eat the meat and you throw away the bones. Huh? But there's a lot of churches and a lot of pastors that are preaching to cold people. And he is cold himself. The old saying says if there's no fire in the pulpit, there's no fire in the pew. Well, I used to change that. If there's no fire in the what did I just say? In the pulpit. No, in the pew. Thank you. You've got to excuse me. I'm having troubles with my head. I have been very, very forgetful the last two weeks, and it scares me. I'm, and I'm being truthful. Okay? Uh, just like right there. I couldn't even think of a congregation. Okay? I didn't mean to quit preaching, but I just want you to know where I'm at. That's why when Brother Sam asked me to preach, I mean, I do want to. But I don't know if my brain will let me. It's scary. It's scary only being 39 and... <laughs> 39. <laughs> Twice. Twice. <laughs> Twice? No, not you're not. I'm 62. You're not 70. No, not yet. Well, I passed. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Let me get back to this. And just pray for me if, if that's okay with you. I want to preach this. I don't want to just fly around and, and, and say stuff. You know, that's the evangelist in me. I can't stop that. But sometimes I ask God just to slow me down a little bit. 
I'm getting old. <laughs> but I'll, I'm glad whatever he does. Amen? But I know I'm not 30 anymore. I believe and I am sure if I'm reading my Bible correctly that this is the last generation. This generation will see God. Hmm? I had a dream. And no, I'm not. Never mind. I did have a dream. And I tell you what, it was so real to me, I didn't know what to do. But I tell you what, I saw the clouds split. Hmm? Jesus on a white horse. Coming back. Not on a cloud like we think, but with the host of angels and saints that went on before. They were all caught up. Amen. Yes. Hmm. Read it. Mm -hmm. It's in Thess Thessalonians. We think it's just that white, puffy cloud. That's not what he's stepping out on. But there's people with him. <clears throat> that makes up the cloud, Brian. Huh? But Jesus was coming back on a white horse and all I could see was thousands upon thousands. He didn't come to earth because the Bible didn't say he was coming to earth at that time. But he did call the day Christ. He showed me a picture of graves. Actual <laughs> graves bursting. Jesus. Bursting out of the dirt. And they stood there for one second and they got clothed in righteousness and foom. Caught away. This is in a twinkling of an eye. So he must have to slow it down for me. <clears throat> Brother said that was real. Right now it seems real to me. Every time I walk out, say, Lord, is it today? Is it today? If it is, I want to be ready. For I see what's going on. I see the good and the bad. I see why they don't want Brother Trump in the White House. Huh? I don't know if he's saved. I'm not a judge there. I know he brought prayer back in in Bible reading. That's more than what the other president did. Hmm? People don't like him because of this. Really? I got a little talk with a lady up here this morning. <laughs> oh my goodness. And you're messing with me. But in this church, some people were hot. Some people were cold. But Jesus told every church before he left what was good for them. Some lost their first love, Sister Sandy, so they had to go back. Hmm? But you know what? When it comes to Laodicea, he said nothing good. There's nothing there. Huh? Read it for yourself if you don't believe me. But he had nothing good to say about this church. And I'm just wondering, Lord, is that where we're at today? Have we missed you somewhere? Because we got our own programs to put on, Lord. And if you don't move within 8 or 8.15, I'm gone. You've heard this before. But I wonder, and I wonder, Lord, there's nobody coming. There's no new ones really coming. 
Mike and Tina are old now. <laughs> you speak for yourself. Though. I am. <laughs> About the same time. <laughs> but, and we know what we're going to do before we come. All planned out. Nobody asking somebody else to come to church. Ask your enemy. We got a lot of them. Oh, yes, we do. Don't think everybody loves you. <laughs> but invite friends, neighbors, enemies. So this church can be filled. Jesus even told the church, go out into the highways, <laughs> to the hedges, and to compel them. Don't drag them. Just say, why don't you go to church? They might be, you might be surprised. Huh? We're used to know. So it doesn't bother us anymore, right? All it does. I am sorry, I, my head is hurting, okay? I need your prayers. But this church, in reality, was spiritually dead, spiritually bankrupt, they were naked, and they were lukewarm. So you ask me, is the cold, does it represent the backsliders, the sinners that come to church? I don't believe so. Brother Sam, you've got cold members here. No amen. Maybe you don't. God bless her. <laughs> we're not cold. I know. We wouldn't be here if we were. But in some instance, when I got into the Bible, and of course I've been listening and studying and reading some books on this, some say that the cold represents the young Christians that are not strong enough yet to move past that. So they are cold. They are preserved. What does ice do to meat? Makes it cold. It, it preserves it. Cold water makes you feel good when it's 90 outside. Cold doesn't always represent people that's going to hell. And I used to preach that until I studied it. You know you got to study before you preach? Huh? And I love that. I was happy when Brother Sam asked me. I didn't tell him that, but I was happy. Yeah. And hot. Hot. Man, you're burning up. Hmm? You're on fire. And churches have those people also. Don't they? Huh? We always have an, well, not here, but we used to have an amen corner. Corner. Brother Sams, he's killing me. <laughs> We all might want to throw this tape away. <laughs> but how many want to be on fire for this local church? Amen. Huh? Amen. Yes. That's what we need. Yes. We need to get on fire. And I mean, don't go out and put some lighter fluid on you and light it. That's not the kind of fire I want. Huh? I don't even know when I ask the Lord, send the fire. I don't know what I'm asking for. 
Maybe I can't handle it yet. That's why he's not sending it to me. You ever think of that? Fire, I usually run away from it to get cool. But this fire, we want to jump in and get hot for Jesus Christ. Amen. For Jesus. That's who we want to be on fire for. But, I, but needless to say, we also got a third group. And they're lukewarm. <clears throat> you know what time it is when the elephant sits on your fence? <laughs> say it. It's time to get a new fence. <laughs> Man, that's so old. I thought everybody would know that. Maybe it's too old. Some people are on the fence. And I'm wondering how many people are on the fence. What I meant by the joke is, is that fence ready to break? You're not hot, you're not cold, we think we're just right. Hmm? But Jesus don't want us that way. We don't want to be lukewarm. I cannot stand a lukewarm Coke. That's gross. Lukewarm coffee, I can down that. But think of the drink that you like, and it's that. Huh? Well, that's what Jesus is going to do. The people that's on the fence. He said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. That's pretty gross, what he said there. Jesus is being pretty gross. He could have said something better than that. Maybe we'll talk about it when we get there. <laughs> You know what? It won't matter. Then. It won't matter. We cannot be on the fence, church. We cannot stay the way we are. I was in the restroom one time, and another pastor walked in, and I asked him, how's your church doing? Well, <laughs> you know how they talk. <laughs> Thinking, man, he's got the pastor voice. <laughs> well, we're holding our own. I said, oh, you're losing the battle, huh? Huh? If you're staying the same, we're not gaining. If you're staying spiritually, we're not gaining. Huh? It bothers me, and I know it bothers Brother Sam, if, if someone comes in unsaved and leaves unsaved, that bothers me. Something's wrong. Huh? Man, when the apostles said a little words, 3,000 souls were added. A couple days later, there was 5,000. They kept on going. Even healed a man of, uh, I don't know, he couldn't walk, going up to the temple in the third chapter. And it just got filled with the Holy Ghost. Huh? They didn't know this man. This man wanted something. Give me something. Give me a coin. Give me five bucks. No, Peter said, I don't have that. But such as I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Amen. And that man just laid there. Huh? What did he do? He got up and he got up. He got up and praising the Lord and danced all the way to the temple. Praise God. Huh? Wonder what the people thought when he got inside. Amen. I used to pastor a small church. And they always asked me, how's the small church doing? I said, it ain't going to be small long. So what do you mean? I said, 
God and I is going to grow that thing. It grew. Brand new lady came in. Had a great big, she called it a gourd. On the side of her neck. Gorder? Well, it's close. But it was inside her skin. But it was out here. Wow. And she come up for prayer. And I said, Lord, I'd like to see this lady healed, if you don't mind. Hmm? We laid hands on her. No, I did not shake her head all around. <laughs> I didn't smack her in the forehead to make her fall. Hmm? All we did is what the Bible told me to do. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, that gourd dirt was still there. But she came back Sunday night early. Believe it or not, I went to church then at 4 o'clock. Service didn't start till 6.30. <laughs> I was early. It's on time. Thank you. <laughs> but she came running in. Pastor, where are you? Well, I was in my little study and I ran out. I said, what's the matter? She goes, it's, it's gone. Praise God. <laughs> it was down to nothing. I said, let me feel. There's got to be a little bump there, like a little cyst now. There was nothing there. Went to the doctor a couple days later. He says, I don't know what happened, but that's gone. And she was supposed to be operated on that Tuesday. <coughs> she said, God did it. He goes, whatever. Well, nothing medical. That's why he didn't say it. Wonderful, that medicine worked, you know. What am I trying to say? I don't have a clue. <laughs> so you laugh on that one. You can't take the credit. But, no, I won't take the credit. But the doctor can't oh. take the credit. Jesus did it. But that's what our church should be. Huh? Yeah. We should be healing the sick. Right. Greater things we ought to do because he went to the Father. Now, what does that mean? Well, when he went up, Holy Ghost tagged him and he went down. Huh? It was a tag team effort. You're in. And now he's everywhere and now we can do more. Huh? Come on, people. We can do more because of the Holy Ghost is everywhere. Amen. Jesus could not be everywhere. He didn't have a car. He didn't have a jet. Or two. Or three. Huh? What's the preacher this morning? Uh, two months ago, this was taped. He condemned that 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 core core that COVID nineteen cursed it. It's done. It's gone. <laughs> Tell me if it's gone. It's two months later. Don't lie. Don't lie to the people. I know God can, but He doesn't always. He doesn't always heal. Even though it's our desire, my mom wanted to be healed in the worst way. But she wasn't healed. And every time I'd go visit her, we'd pray. Pastor would go and visit her. They'd pray. Oh, she was saved. But God needed her home. Because good, good angels are hard to find. Hmm? My mom was a good church person. And I'll leave it at that. She had her faults. She had her faults. But she was my mama. I've been coming here now for, I think, over three years. 
Three years. Can you believe that? I remember walking in the first time and sitting right where you are. And the church was pretty full that morning. And I used this before. And this I miss. Sister Sandy standing back there holding out lease. Of course, I know I'm late. I know that. But it was her smile that caught my attention. Huh? Maybe not yours, but that's what God said. Uh, he said, you're home. Huh? I don't know how many times I asked the Lord, okay, now where do you need me? You know, just, just to try him. But Brother Sam, he won't let me leave you. I keep coming back. And it's not that I'm not going to church. Just because maybe I missed here doesn't mean I wasn't in church. I missed two weeks ago, and I'm so glad that I went to my friend's church up in Grove City. Because we went out to eat. And he took a choking spell. I was scared to death. And this man is not little. Okay? I could not get my arms around him. So a lady from another table came over and helped me. And she went from behind as far as she get, and I'm pushing on his stomach right below the belly button. Well, it came out. I don't know if I did that right, Sister Sandy, but it came out. I know she's a nurse. You could have killed him. <laughs> but I, I was on the verge of dropping him. I could not hold him anymore. He was passing out. But right then and there, I said, God, I can't do this. You've got to do something now. And it came out. Amen. Amen. I thank God for that. Even his wife said, Brian, you were supposed to be here today. Just for this reason. Okay. I'll take that. And then of course they asked me to come back. And you see where I'm at. <laughs> I kind of like the pastor too. You know? He's a pretty good guy. I believe he's got this heart for this church. He doesn't have to do this. You know? But he wants to. God asked him to. And he heard the calling of God. It's tough being a pastor. You've got to hear everybody's moaning and grumbling. <laughs> I had this one lady use me all the time for a ride to go to the doctors and go to the dentist and go here and go there. I said, you know what, sis, since you, I'm doing this all for you, you can come to church on Sunday morning. Oh, no, 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 I got my own church. What? I said, then you call your pastor from now on. She never called back. Was that ignorant? I don't think so. You just run into people that are lukewarm, whatever they are, you know, and you just pat them on the back, and send them on their way. Then you got some that falls way back. You can't deal with them no more. Huh? What do you do with them? They've been on the church books for 50 years. What does that mean? Being on the church book don't take you to heaven. I can go and join every church around here. But I wouldn't because they expect me to be there every Sunday. <laughs> but that wouldn't take me to heaven. I can only be saved. That takes me there. I'm not talking the, the sanctification, the Holy Ghost. I'm just talking about getting your heart right with God. 
And I'm glad that everybody raised their hands today. So, Brother Steve, you made it one more week of being saved. Thank God. Amen. Amen. But let's try to help our pastor. I know uh, people in here has really given a lot here behind the scenes. And we're thankful. But if everybody would just do something. Last year or the year before, I can't remember, the pastor even gave us a challenge of bringing one person to church. I believe that was. Well, that fell by the wayside quick. Yeah, it is hard. And it's going to get harder. I thought with all this that's coming on the earth today, and I mean the earth, not just the United States, that people would be running to church. But they're running to the beer gardens. They can't keep enough beer in. I know, I got four bars right around me. But they're quiet ones, thank God. And I watch out there on the streets just a dancing. And I'm thinking, Lord, they're just doing just what Noah's time did. Bible says in Noah's time they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage mm -hmm. until he entered the ark and the door was shut. Yeah. They were just living, just like today. But Lord, I went to church. I know your heart. I already put you through the x-ray machine. Hmm? God can put up with a lot of things, but he can't put up with a phony heart. Amen. True? Amen. 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 So we need to get on fire Amen. for the Lord again. I remember Tina when she first got saved, she was ready ready to get up on the church roof and holler, I'm saved! Oh, you don't remember that? I still do. Oh. Well, I'm not around you all the time. But you know what? That's what we need again. Man, when we first got saved, we told everybody. I told my brother who lived right across the street from me. He says, I'll give you a week. He's pretty tough. I'll give you a week, and you'll be right back. Well, that was back in September 16th, 1979. Amen. I don't know how many years that is. 41. <laughs> 41. 41 years. Thank you, Lord. I thought you figured that so much. Man, what? Don't ask Siri. <laughs> 41. 41 years. Well, I only served the devil for 21 then. That's good. Not even that, because I'm, I'm counting the baby age. So I did pretty good. Huh? But when I served the devil, I served him. Oh, man, I'd do anything he wanted me to do. Anything. Just tell me. But when I got saved, I told the Lord the same thing. You just ask me to do something and I'll do it. Pastor keeps worrying that I'm going to be late or I'm not going to show when he asked me to preach. And I just told him the other day, have I ever let you down? No. no. Have I? And I won't. If I promise you something, I'll do it. To the best of my knowledge and ability, I'll do it. If he don't want me to preach no more here, I'll do it. <laughs> that make right? That, never mind. Am I preaching too long? You know what? I haven't got to do this since last year. So I'm just putting some WD-40 on me. Trying to get the rust off again. 
Yeah. You know, it's hard to just jump right back in when you've been off for so long. It is. And I know pastor needs some rest. But I enjoy preaching. I had people in my congregation, men, that were, were called to preach. And I said, I, I don't know when you can preach. Because I love it. <laughs> but you know what? I remember the pastor that helped me out. So all three of them got a turn. I said, okay, okay, the rest of the month is mine. But let's serve the Lord. Let's try to get hot. Let's get off the fence if we're on it. It's not a good place to be. Sometimes we get down. Sometimes we get discouraged. But don't take it out on God. If God doesn't do anything more for us from this time on, He's still God. Huh? He's still God. But you know He's not going to quit giving. It's not in His Word. Amen. I want us to stand. I don't know what time it is. I hit it right on the butt. Amen. I want you to know that I love you today. And I need your prayers. I really, really need your prayers. Uh, so I'm going to ask my sister right here to dismiss us in prayer. Me? You. <laughs> I wasn't prepared, but I'll... I know you're not. Go ahead. Okay. Father God, as we come here today and as we leave, Cover us with your blood. Mm -hmm. Everyone that's here, guide them home safely. In the name of Jesus, in his precious name, amen. 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 That's good. That's good. <laughs>